give me the broad strokes about the problem it solves, what's it doing, what's the goal, come and kind, kind of give me the big overview and then we can get into the nitty gritty. Uh, our primary goal is to be that we develop our own layer one blockchain with some unique applications and ways that we utilize them on our chain in comparison to other chains. Um, and so we are a DAO by nature. Primary goal of the blockchain is to incorporate as many of your favorite and most useful applications that are on current blockchains, such as Aave, Synthetix, uh, you could say Cake, because they have a lot of features on their decks. Um, just anything that you can imagine that is very useful and functional for the average investor. What's going on, cowboy? In this video, we've got a new crypto project called Generational Wealth Finance, and we have the founder behind the mind behind it. His name is Mark, and we're going to be grilling him for some questions, trying to figure out, hey, is this a scam or is this a legit project that we need to sink our hard-earned money and time into because it is, it's going off to the moon, right? It's got a good team behind it or it's got uh, good fundamentals or some kind of utility. We need to figure out what kind of project we have on our hands here. If you're new to this channel, my name is Aaron. I'm on a journey to my next Bitcoin while helping you to your next Bitcoin. I'm not your financial advisor, but just a lizard brain cowboy exploring the wild west of cryptocurrency with a whole bunch of other cowboys if you want to join us hit the subscribe button down below or give us a like on this video if you're feeling frosty you know what i mean okay so before we get into the video uh, i need to let you know that it's so hard out here right for a cowboy for you and for me to do some proper research on on projects especially good projects we have to sift through all the the garbage to get to the good ones well these youtubers out here they just be shilling projects that just it doesn't matter to them you know they're getting paid and they don't care about reading through a you know a, a, a freaking website or whatever but i'd rather find real information straight from the horse's mouth straight from the founders okay and that's that's who runs the project we need to know who we're investing in and then what we're investing in so we have mark here and he is the founder behind generational wealth finance and we need to grill him up for questions and figure out hey is this project for you and me and at the end of this video you have you'll be fully equipped to decide whether or not you like this project or not so mark welcome to the hot seat hey thanks for having me it's good to have you, my friend. Before we get into generational wealth finance, I want to know about you. Uh, what's your origin story, background, little synopsis of coming into crypto, and then we could get into GWF. Uh, absolutely. So, um, my background is, you know, I started out as a regular day trader, like everybody else, back in 2014. For me, was the year, uh, and it actually took a fair amount of time to kind of get the grasp on everything. And then once I sort of figured out trading and charting and technical analysis, I um, started to get more interested in how everything worked. Uh, you know, the inner workings of smart contracting and layer one blockchains and everything like that. And so, uh, yeah, one thing led to another and I ended up absorbing a lot of knowledge and, uh, you know, wanted to go for our my own thing or our own thing because we have a council. So, uh, yeah, that's a little little quick run up of my history awesome. and then to now. Awesome. So 2014, 2014, you started, started day trading, started getting the smart contracts. And now we're here, um, 2022, oh, man, I can't believe this is the year. Tell me <laughs> about know. generational wealth finance. It's something that I think we all want, but, uh, yeah, give me the broad strokes about the problem it solves. What's it doing? What's the goal? Come and kind, of, kind of give me the big overview and then we could get into the nitty gritty. Absolutely. So, um, it's, it's actually generational wealth society, uh, GWS. Oh, um, it's okay. a, no big deal. Um, and so we are first and foremost, uh, our primary goal is to our end result as for our end result to be that we develop our own layer one blockchain with some unique applications and ways that we utilize them on our chain in comparison to other chains. Um, and so we are a DAO by nature. Um, and we actually have multiple phases in our roadmap. We have the launch phase, which we've already gone through. We have phase one, which consists of generating a supply and building a treasury and then creating revenue streams to power our blockchain. And then phase two is when we actually move to our, we would have developed and be in the process of moving to our own chain. Um, and that would include bringing our treasury value and uh, our tokens, doing a swap one-to-one -to -one token to coin, uh, you know, because you go from tokens to coins when you move. And um, so... Really, it's just uh, phase one right now is sort of a building phase. And 
it's supposed to help us move towards phase two, which is our ultimate goal of our own layer one blockchain. Okay, so you are you are creating um, a, a supply a treasury right now, and so you're building up um, what like a like a pool of liquid assets or whatever, uh, and you're going to keep it, and then you're going to build out a blockchain from that. Um, well, not not exactly. So uh, we are using the traditional uh, staking and bonding protocols that Ohm uses. However, our staking. Uh, Five-day ROI and APY are much lower than Ohms uh, and other forks have ever been, um, and our bond rates are aimed to be at or below fifteen percent, sort of to be slightly more beneficial than staking, but not much, um, because obviously you don't want to incentivize bonding over staking because then there are issues with that. But um, ultimately, what we do after we take in funds from bonding, um, primarily die. Um, is we so in our git book which is basically our holy grail our little bible of uh, everything gws um we have what are called landmarks and so every so often a price uh target is determined in the landmarks and uh once we hit that um it is listed what we do whether it is to add liquidity do buybacks burn tokens or allocate funds to uh, one of three or four different revenue generating streams. Uh, one being real world revenue streams, one being DeFi revenue streams, and then the DeFi revenue streams are broken down into a stable based allocation and a risk based allocation. Um, so we are aiming to create multiple revenue streams and um, a lot of people that have come along have actually taken an interest in our targets for real world revenue streams, you know, because when you make your project reliant on DeFi only and the crypto space and then the crypto market goes down or there's a bear market, where does your revenue come from? You're kind of stuck. And so our goal was to target real world revenue streams. Uh, things that are easy to put together and maintain, such as uh, land ownership and rental to solar uh, companies. What they will do is they will actually pay you a percentage of the profit that the solar panels that they put on your property bring in. They'll do the install, they'll bring everything in, set it all up, and you earn premiums just for renting your property. Um, so that's one very easy route that we are looking into taking. Uh, we're also looking into going towards uh, mining because, of course, we all like crypto. We're all into crypto and DeFi. And why not support your favorite networks and earn something back from it? Okay. Um, so that's just kind of a rundown of the revenue streams and the phase one. Hope you're enjoying the AMA right now. Look, Mark and I have decided to do a giveaway of $220 worth of GWS to five different winners, okay? So we are giving away $220 of GWS. That's 10 GWS to five different winners. What is that? Like over $1,000 of like almost uh, you know $1,100 worth of giveaways. Man, this is why you watch this channel. I am so happy for you. Uh, all you have to do is watch the rest of the video and comment on your favorite thing about GWS so that we talked about what one of the there's a whole bunch there's, I listed a whole bunch of stuff that's cut that's coming up comment on the favorite thing and why um, for GWS and he's gonna pick out in the comment section below uh, what, who's the winners are so he's gonna pick out five and you have the chance to win two hundred and twenty dollars it's ten GWS valued right now at twenty two bucks so that's about two hundred twenty two twenty bucks for you thanks so much for watching let's keep this AMA rolling so your revenue streams that you're building up consist of two different types of revenue DeFi and real world now DeFi splits into two different parts stable and risky assets and real world splits up to three different parts rental to solar panels, land, and mining. And I'm assuming those kind of converged on each other too. Um, well, well, I would say real world isn't really broken up in any. We're kind of looking at uh, all different paths that we can take. Those were just some, some examples that I was throwing out that we've already uh, considered and looked into. Okay, how fast are we moving to real world stuff? Um, I believe uh, our first real world allocation would be when our treasury hits 1 million. Uh, we're currently we hit our first landmark of two hundred fifty thousand, and we added uh, half of that back as liquidity, um, you know, to kind of build our liquidity pool up. And that's another thing that we're doing leading up to the one million uh, treasury value, just so that we have a sizable pool to reduce price impact. 
And, um, you know, it's, it's important. It shows people that we care about the project and that we care about its longevity by depositing treasury and protocol protocol owned, uh, liquidity back into the, the pair. So, okay. So let's, let's, let's zoom out a little bit. Cause I think we're, uh, I think for someone who's new, we might be getting lost in the weeds with some technical stuff right now. What we're doing is we're trying to build up a treasury, correct? Yep. And a treasury, could you help me define what a treasury is? Um, so a treasury would basically be um, the DAO's collective pool of funds, an easy and way DAO to look at it. DAO is a collection of people who own the token, right? That's correct. Yes. Okay. So then, now we all have governance and stuff like that. And so we're able to, 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 to vote and stuff. Uh, yes, that is, that is the next thing that we are having developed is our voting protocol. Um, Got it. Because primarily we just launched with staking and bonding and, and a functional platform. Awesome. So the the DAO or the the decentralized autonomous organization, which is people who own uh, ge generational wealth, uh, once we have a treasury, that's built up by bonds. What's the relationship between a bond and a treasury here? Uh, absolutely. So bonds are basically when you bond, you are purchasing tokens, minting them. Um, through the treasury at a discounted rate over a vested period of time. So for us, uh, the vested period of time is six days and the discounted rate could be anywhere from 20% to 10% to 5%, depending on the market price at the time in comparison to the bond. Um, and Got so it. how that works is the bond accumulates continuously and you can claim your accrued amount at any point um, as many times as you want. Although we know Ethereum gas isn't very forgivable. Um, but yes, so it's not something that's locked for six days and then unlocked. It is claimable at any time in a proportionate amount. Got it. So, so me as a regular lizard brain investor, we go to this uh, to your protocol here. We give you, you know, a hundred dollars, and then we withdraw, let's say, a hundred and twenty dollars worth of of generational wealth society finance that your token, uh, because we got to add a discount. And then, and then you will have my assets of whatever I gave came to maybe like die or something like that. And then uh, that's how you build up that treasury. Is is that about right? That is that is correct. Yep. Perfect. Now, now that you have your treasury, um, are you using the the revenue streams to fill the treasury even more? Is that is that what's happening? So the primary goal of the revenue streams is to bring revenue back into the treasury. But what we do with that is um, allocate about eighty percent of that back to the liquidity pool. So by the end of our phase one, we should have amassed a very large pool of liquidity, both DAI and GWS tokens, which we will then be moving over to our layer one chain independently to bring value over there. And then we can use the tokens for other things and incentives on the chain as well. Awesome. Okay, so now that we're, we're building up the treasury to build a blockchain, what do we intend to do with the blockchain? Right, absolutely. So uh, the blockchain is phase two, and um, the primary goal of the blockchain is to incorporate as many of your favorite and most useful applications that are on current blockchains, such as Aave, Synthetics, uh, you could say Cake, because they have a lot of features on their decks. Um, just anything that you can imagine that is very useful and functional for the average investor, we plan to have one application suite with all of these applications that all utilize the GWS coin. So you could deposit your GWS into Aave for collateral. You could deposit it into uh, synthetics to trade synthetic tokens. You could do a variety of things all using the same coin instead of needing to have 10 different coins to use 10 different protocols. Got it. Okay, so I got some general questions here. Let's yep. start on the on the lower end of the treasury first, and then we've got the higher end of the of the blockchain, or rather, phase one, phase two, phase one. We're talking about the treasury here. Um, it seems like, like you said, it it's a uh, it's like a, an Ohm or Olympus DAO. It's like that type of uh, protocol. Why wouldn't I just invest in Ohm or invest in some other one of these like treasury uh, protocols? And what what does Generational Wealth Society do differently from these other protocols? Um, absolutely. So I do, I am not fully aware of the background of a lot of these other protocols. Um, but as far as I know, none of them have, um, a corporation in the real world fully registered with an EIN. Um, and we are making very large efforts to 
allocate funds to real world revenue streams, which I am not aware of anybody else doing. Um, so, and that's, that's, that's one of our primary selling points because it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of logistics and a lot of, uh, legal hurdles. And, uh, once we have that all resolved, I truly feel like you're going to start seeing more DAOs that are focusing on real world investments more than they are focusing on DeFi investments. Interesting. That's an interesting point. And I'll, let me get to that. But, uh, what are some of the legal hurdles that you are talking about that you have to accomplish that bring someone like me security? Like why are you in, you know, incorporating and what benefit is that to me if you're incorporating? Uh, absolutely. So the way that we have it set up is actually that the um, corporation is owned by the Treasury multi-sig wallet. And so there is no owner. There is only the multi-sig. And so we do not have possession of any of the property or revenue streams or anything like that that is acquired by GWS. We simply act as... Uh, ambassadors, if you will, to act and execute on behalf of the majority DAO vote. So if okay. the DAO votes for a solar farm over mining, um, for example, we would act accordingly, execute, and all of that is in the name of the DAO and the corporation. It's not owned by any of the council members. Okay. So what's my relationship? Say I buy in with $10,000. No, you got a hundred. You got two hundred fifty thousand dollar treasury. Say I buy in with like twenty five thousand dollars. Okay, um, what's my relationship now with um, the real world assets here? Say you acquire land, rental, solar panels, mining rigs. What's my relationship with those? Can I go in there, hang out? Is it can I? Is it my, part of my land too? What like what? what do, um, so technically it would not be partly your land just because it's owned by the treasury. Um, but the, pr the primary reason for the existence of that land is to generate revenue and the revenue comes back to the treasury and goes into the liquidity pool. So you ultimately have possession of your tokens. You earn more tokens with yours and we provide revenue back into the liquidity pool for you to slowly take profit over time and sort of like uh, be a long term, a long term part of the DAO being successful. Okay. How do I see, like, um, I, I, I watched one of your other um, AMAs and you said one of your big goals was transparency. What are some steps that you've given for the transparency of the real world assets? Because to me, uh, is any of that on blockchain or done on blockchain? Is, can I see any, like, how much money there, uh, how much money did you spend on buying the land? Who the solar panel is? How much money you're making? Stuff like that. How do I see any of that? Um, so currently you can't because we haven't executed anything in, in real world, but um, absolutely we are looking into a way to have our entire business banking information public in a safe way for us. Also, obviously there's some information you can't divulge um, and we plan on having all of the documentation uploaded as it should be for everybody else to be able to research and look into. I uh, will have multiple folders depending on what the revenue stream is, obviously they'll all be separated. So it's less confusing, but um, it's really just presenting everything to everybody as it, as it comes. There's not anything that we're looking to keep under wraps. Um, you know, everybody knows where I am. I'm in Maine. Uh, my name and my information's in the get book as long, along with our other uh, three public council members, uh, the multi-sig, is viewable by anybody. So really up to this point, everything's been completely transparent and we plan to keep it that way because there's no reason not to, you know, that's why we're public. Awesome. Awesome. So now, so you're planning to build this treasury to, you said a million dollars. Once you hit a million dollars, you're going to start the pro uh, process of developing your own blockchain. Uh, no. So the, the final target is a hundred million dollars, whether that takes Six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. Uh, we can't really put an accurate projection on it because crypto markets kind of dictate themselves. Sure, um, sure. And uh, so it's more just a rough time frame that we have. And then we have landmarks. Uh, if if you choose to look in our Git book, there's a section in phase one that says landmarks, is labeled landmarks. And it shows you from $0 to $100 million what we plan to do with each landmark. It's already written out. Um, it. And so... Some of the, a lot of that information is readily available, but again, if you guys, if anybody jumps in the channel and is looking for any information like that, I'm always in there watching and happy to help too. So, got it, got it. Yeah, a hundred million is a, is a long ways off, especially when you have sixteen hundred uh, followers on Twitter. What's what's the plan 
to go from the size of community that you have now to the size of community that you need for the hundred million? Oh, uh, absolutely. So um, it's it's a long process, that's for sure. Um, currently, it's just getting our name out there and becoming well known. We're trying to target uh, other communities that follow Ohm Forks and Ohm themselves, you know, because they already understand the whole process of it. And then we're trying to uh, break everything down in simple terms for people to help them understand, you know, a lot of people are short sighted. And so they can't really grasp the long term vision of it. But um, for the ones that do, it's it's really pleasant because when they finally actually understand and then have a great discussion with you about it, it really it really sits well knowing that some people are grasping your your end goal. You know what I mean? Especially when it's something that you came up with. Good deal. I, I was reading my notes wrong. It says here, actually, your, your goal is to get to a million to start the other rev, the real world revenue streams. Was, was that that, is, that right? is correct. Yes. To, to allocate that's, that's towards the first one. So so who's making the decisions on the real world? Is that the DAO again? Uh, yes. So we will we will make proposals with multiple options that are allowed in the let me rephrase that. We will be making proposals with the opportunities that we have available to us based on where we are located physically. So okay. some of us may have more opportunity for land and solar farms than others. You know, like for me, I'm in Maine, so there's a lot of land up north, you know, that's just undeveloped. And we can tap into that easily versus uh, somebody who's in like New York where, you know, you, there's not there's not big plots of land like that available for cheap like there is here. So yeah. it's kind of like um, taking advantage of our geographical uh, like area, you know. Gotcha. Are you all in the United States? Or are you uh, global? How big is your team? Tell me a little bit about the team. So uh, the council has six members. Um, three of us, four of us are in the United States. Two of us are not. Uh, one gentleman is in Dubai, and uh, our developer team is actually located in the Middle East. And so we are uh, – t- time zones are uh, – a battle <laughs> yeah, I um I but uh so yeah the, we have six members on the council uh one of the members of the council is a lead dev and then he leads three other developers three or four other developers uh depending on how many he needs he has a, a lot of resources at his disposal which we really appreciate um yeah. and then we have seed investors and then we have people that we recruit to support our project once they understand it that are influencers online. But um, as for a primary team, it's, it's the council is the primary team, just six individuals plus the other couple developers. Got it. Got it. So one of the things that attracted me to uh, treasury type of uh, uh, protocols was that I could earn back the coin, uh, you know, relatively quickly because of the high APY and you admittedly said we don't have a high APY. Um, is is that a why is that choice? Why do you make that choice to a lower APY? Um, you, you know, talk talk to me about like how you're thinking through that. Why not slap a like these other projects got a hundred thousand percent APY on it? Like why not why not um, generational wealth? Uh, absolutely. So um, I mean, of course, we all know kind of what's happened with Ohm and a lot of its forks in terms of dilution. Uh, and it really, really heavily impacts the value of your project and your token. And so, you know, even though phase one is temporary, our staking and bonding protocols are temporary, we still want to keep a good grip on um, inflation because we have a target supply for for when our chain goes live. Um, it's, it's you know, between 3.5 to 10 million. And um, we, we don't want to inflate very far past that because then we have to put in a lot of active effort and funding to reduce it back to that point. And so we do have uh, a few things that the developers are actually looking into for us to implement on our platform as uh, small little burn mechanics um, to kind of help combat inflation some more. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I've seen, I've seen what happens. Like the people who start in the beginning, they get the major benefit because everyone starts to buy in and they start earning that stuff back and then they sell off and that stuff continues. There's a, there's a huge selling pressure that's happening because everyone made so much money and then it's hard to get that going again. Uh, yep. Part of that reason is because some of the early people are team members. So what's your team allocation and um, should I be worried about it? 
We have no team allocation. If any of the team members wanted to buy in, they had to pay the one Ethereum, just like everybody else in the seed round. Um, and seed positions were only given out for one per individual. Nobody, nobody got more, nobody got less. Well, that's incorrect. Um, the seed allocations were based off of the value of your Ethereum when you sent it in. So some people got GWS tokens equivalent to $3,500 Ethereum. Some people got GWS tokens equivalent to $2,800 Ethereum. Got but it. nobody got more than one allocation, that. and the allocations did not exceed 500 GWS uh, at any point. Wow. That's good to hear. I like that. Okay. So let's say you get the 100 million, right? I want to spend a lot of time because I feel like we're going to be in that spot. And if you get to 100 million, we'll probably make another video with you. But let's say you get to 100 million and you're starting to uh, get that blockchain. Give me the, why not, the same kind of question, what are you going to do different from the other blockchains here? Why develop the blockchain in the first place, and what are you going to do different? Uh, absolutely. So we, we are trying to create a, it's hard to use this word appropriately, um, safer investing platform for people coming into the space. Um, you know, safer is a very subjective word for the space that we're in, but um, it's just, it's hard to look at everything that exists right now and realize that there is not a very good entry point for for new level people. You know, um, we we want them to be able to buy directly with their dollars, and we want them to be able to look at our our applications on our chain and our platform and and be confident about what they're doing. You know, we don't want people losing sleep because they bought something and they're worried about it or they stake somewhere and they're worried about it or they bonded and they're afraid the project's going to go to zero in 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Like we're, we're trying to create an, env an environment that is beneficial for people where they can put their assets and profit. Um, but also not astronomically. We want it to be safe and massive percent profits in a short period of time are not a safe thing. Um, and so our focus is more on, you know, safe, sustainable Sub stability, DeFi. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, generational wealth society, right? We, we, we've got, is there anything left that we haven't covered any secret developments that you, you've got that's coming up? You know what I mean? That like, you need, it's a fire in your belly that you just need to tell the world, like, give, is that everything that we've covered with, uh, G GWS? Uh, so, so uh, like I said, we are first and foremost getting our proposal system um, developed. That's that's important because the DAO can't make votes properly without it. Um, but we do have, like I said, those couple other little features coming that the developers are looking into. And so I can tell you we, we are looking into adding bonds as a service on our platform to bring other project partnerships and uh, more visibility to our platform. Um, I can give you the term. I can't give you very much detail because it's kind of not something that anybody else has really put out there yet. And so if I give you the intricacies of it, somebody else might go and do it before we have it implemented. Okay. Um, so bonding as a service. Um, we are also working on a collaboration with Chainlink to bring a provably fair random lottery to our platform that has a small burn percentage. Um, and then we are also looking into, oh, how do I word this one? I'm gonna I'm gonna save that one. I'm gonna save what, that one. What's the, what's the tension <laughs> there? What's the tension there? <laughs> it's a, it's it's to word it properly. You know what I mean? Um, it just uh, I gotta be careful with how I word stuff sometimes. It's on your screen. Just read it. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. So the last thing that I was going to mention is that, um, we are looking to implement some collateralization protocols on our platform to enable people to collateralize their GWS and withdraw a proportionate amount of ETH, DAI, USDC, USDT, just as you would on AVE or any other, um, platform except for it enables you to do it with your gws um, wow, so like a lending protocol uh yes but specifically for uh our our token um, and of lending. course the the uh the the funds that you would withdraw from that uh the eth the die and things like that would be um provided by the treasury as well 
Oh, wow. Great. So you've got a votes proposal, governance, you got different burn mechanics, you got bonds as a service, chain link lottery, and a collateralization co all coming up. And this is all in the near future. This sounds very exciting. Is there anything left that we need to talk about uh, regarding GWS? No, you got the last little bit out of me there, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy to do it. Look, this all sounds very exciting. Guys, if you were interested in GWS, if you if it's something, this sounds like something you want to get into. And I know we have been talking about these types of uh, um, uh, coins here since like January. And I, you know, I've been in, especially like a downtrend. Uh, I would like to see the high. I like to see me earning back some of that coin just so like to kind of hedge against the downward trend trending market. Well, now we're kind of upward trending, but we'll see what happens. Guys, get into good, solid projects. Check out the links down in the description down below. If you are interested, I'm sure Mark is available to speak to him or speak with any of his team members if this is something that's for you. Anyway, guys, get into lizard brain, simple, good projects, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.